Welcome back. This is video four for EE4120, Industrial Controls and Automation at Wright State University. This video is going to focus on some of the practical sides of making your four first program. So I'm just going to walk you through that and we're going to do a little basic Boolean structure. So over here in your controller organizer, to get started writing your ladder logic program, you're going to double click on main routine. And as you can see here, it generated a main routine with ladder logic. So ladder logic runs in the following ways. These are rails. In the middle, these are called rungs. The logic runs from left to right and from top down to bottom. So any type of logic gets stuck in the middle, it can't get to the bottom. So make sure you program accordingly. So in the last video, we talked a little bit about Boolean logic. And if you look close to our main program, right above it, you see something that looks like a normally open and a normally closed gate. So we can use that right away to create logic. So we're going to click on our first rung, and we're going to select an, a normally open switch and it's going to just pop it right there. Now you'll notice some errors. These E's stand for errors. And there's a funny looking question mark on top of there. The reason there's a question mark is we need to create something called a tag. A tag is a value that will help us reference information being passed through this Boolean member. So to create a tag, we're going to right click on the question mark and select new tag. So your tag name needs to be pertinent to what it's representing. If this is a normally open button, so let's just call this red push button. And you'll notice that there are no space in my tag names. Uh, you cannot create a space in the tag names. So you must use an underscore. All right. Then you're going to want to add a description to it. This is a red push button. Descriptions are really handy if you have to check with somebody else's code or if your code um, is going to be checked by somebody else as well. The next thing we're going to look at is the type. Now you have a base type, an alias type, a produced, and a consumed type. For right now, we're just going to stick with the base type. We'll talk about the alias quite a bit more later. And this, of course, is a Boolean gate. So we're going to keep it data type bool. If you need to, you just click this button here, and you can select a whole bunch of other types of things. But this is a gate. All gates are Boolean. Then we click, clear, correct, uh, then we click create. Um, apparently, I already created that tag. Let's just try red button. All right, so the red button, this is a red push button. You notice that we still have errors. Um, every rung needs some form of output or it will not process. So our outputs are represented by these little coil symbols. Now, it doesn't have to energize a coil. It could energize a light. Um, it could energize a couple different things. It could even energize another switch. But these are what represents our outputs in the programming. So go ahead and click on that, and that will create our output coil. So I'm going to make this a red light. So again, right click to create your tag, and we're going to call this red light. I think I already created that, so we'll call it red light one. Again, this is a red light. Sounds redundant, but uh, when you get more complicated stuff, that will be important type is going to be base. This output is a Boolean structure as well. It's either true or it's false, right? So we want to keep that as a base tag. Occasionally you'll make that an alias tag, but for our example we're going to use a base and create. So there we go. We have a normally open switch and we have a red light. We are ready to test it. In order to test it we're going to need to communicate to our PLC and we can do that by either going to communications and download or we can go to this little drop menu and download. So this is just the warning making sure we're not going to kill somebody in the plant. 
go ahead and select download and it will compile your routine. Once we are done downloading, we do want to change it back to remote run, re run, remote run mode in order to test our programming. So go ahead and select yes. You will know your program is live because on the rails you will see green. So this is sort of like some sort of green magical energy that we're using for our programming. But, of course, nothing else is happening. The red light's off. The re you'll know the red light is on when this tag highlights green. And you'll know this information is passing through when this tag highlights green. Of course, we don't have a red button to push, so we're going to simulate that. So select your button, all right, right click, and you can select toggle. You notice you can also push control T. When you toggle this true, that closes this gate, and you'll see our output becomes true. Now, if we did something the opposite, let's say let's change our programming a little bit. Let's go communications. Let's go offline. And instead of a normally open button, let's make this a normally closed button. So right click. Actually, instead of right click, double click. And you see XIC, examine if closed. That's a normally open. We're going to make this XIO, examine if off. If you look right here, it's always energized. So let's go back online, download. Yes, we're not going to kill anybody today. And back to remote run. So the red light is always on until somebody pushes this button. So I am going to right click and toggle, and now the light is off. So you can see from that there's a couple different functions you can get just from using these gates that are very important. In the next video, we're going to um, create a couple more Boolean gates and start to look at some of their more complex structures.